you here at Luverne First Assembly, and uh, I appreciate you. We uh, went to Sister Opal's brother, uh, brother's uh, birthday celebration yesterday afternoon in Brantley, and uh, Brother Wade Franks, his wife, Sister Gail, was there, and her daughter, Carmen, first time we met them, and we got up to leave, it was about a little after three o'clock when we got up to leave, and was greeting people, and Here's what she said. She said, I know God's going to use Luverne First Assembly. She said, great things are coming to your church. And she said, I got chill bumps all over me because I know these words are true. Now, I know you've heard them for a year and a half. Please don't let them just dissipate and say, oh, that's just something they're saying. Because one of these days, you hear this preacher this morning, one of these days we're going to get started and we're not going to quit because people are going to be hungry for God. Amen. Set yourself in array. Get ready. Rearrange your schedule. I'm working on that today. I'm working on rearranging my schedule. Aren't you? I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to preach. I'm in the second chapter of the book of Acts. I'm going to give you a minute to turn there. Last year, at the first of the year last year, pastor had already preconceived my future. By that I mean I'd already set some things in my mind that I was going to do. And I was pretty settled on it. I mean, sometimes, no, you get your mind settled on things. And I was praying one day and the Lord spoke to me and said, you can cancel your plans, I got other plans. Amen. So from that day on, it's not my agenda anyway. It's God's agenda. I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price, not a price such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And the Lord's called me and commissioned me. And He spoke to me too many times for me to do my own thing. Amen. I mean, I, I, know, the, I know the Lord's got things going on. I uh, let me make this announcement before I read. We were set up to do a fifth Sunday night singing. I did not realize it was Labor Day weekend. We have a lot of people that's got other plans going on, so we're going to cancel our fifth Sunday night singing. We'll just preach to you fifth Sunday night, and we'll do it on the next fifth Sunday night. Amen. We want you to have time for family and so forth and so on. I really didn't realize, it, it wouldn't bother me, but I, I realized that you probably had plans and things for Labor Day. Uh, the last holiday before winter time. Jesus, Acts chapter 2. There's a little word in this first verse that says when. When is a mighty big word. When means you've waited a while. When means you've watched it come to pass. When means you didn't know it was going to get here. When, God? When's this going to happen? When, when are we going to see these things? Lord, we've been reading this word when for 1,500 years. And God, we just didn't realize when was going to get here. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it finally got there. Were you ready for it? 380 wasn't ready for it. 380 people wasn't ready for it. Only 120. wonder what that percentage is that didn't make it. Some of you mathematical geniuses need to figure that out. 120 was in the upper room. These 120 were persistent. They were disciples. We we're all disciples of Christ. They were family. We we're all in the family of God. 120 of them were persistent about what God said. And you know, sometimes we read or hear what the Lord says and we discard it. We say, well, I've heard it before. Uh, it, it's amazing how the Lord can tell us things and speak things to us. And we realize, Lord, I've heard this so many times before and it hadn't, still hadn't come to pass. Well, one of these days it's going to come to pass. Amen. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Everybody there was filled, 120 of them. Them on the outside wasn't filled. 
76% wasn't filled. They started from the Mount of Olives. Man, I feel the Lord in this place. They started, five, over 500 started from the Mount of Olivet when Jesus ascended to go back into heaven. Started for the upper room. They didn't have far to go. Jesus had said, go to Jerusalem and tarry till ye be endued with power. Or you got the endurance, have you got the endurance this morning to be endued with power? Amen. Have you got endurance this morning to be endued with power from on high? 70, 67%, is that right? 76% didn't have that endurance. Let's say there's 100% people here, and they are. There's 100% of us here. 76% of you didn't make it. Seventy-six percent didn't make it. They heard it secondhand. They heard it from family members, but they wasn't there on this day when, when our schedules are going to come together, or when things are going to come to pass, or when seventy-six percent didn't make it. They had other things more important than God. Verse 3. Oh, verse 2 said, If you was there, you would have been included. No questions asked. No questions asked. You would have been included in when. Verse 3 says, There appeared... Under them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's pray. Father, we love you this morning. We feel your divine presence. Lord, we know the mind of Christ is in this building, Lord, because we sense your presence here. I pray this morning for that anointing, God, to preach this word and make it easy for me to preach, God, because it's in my spirit. I pray, Lord, to move every obstacle out of every heart here this morning, including my own. And God, let this word be renowned today. Lord, let it be a landmark in our relationship with you. Lord, we want this word to be inclusive, to include every one of us, God, for the promises of God that are yea and amen. I pray this morning, God, let this word stir our hearts. Lord, let us stir us out of complacency, ordinary, common. Lord, let it stir us today, set us in array as you have spoken to us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's some kind of a percentage, Brother Randy, 76%. That's way beyond majority. The majority of the church world today don't know what you and I know. They haven't experienced what you and I have experienced with God. They don't even believe what you and I believe this morning. 86% of a certain denomination don't even believe this is God's inspired holy word and they're pastors. They don't believe in the end times. They don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. They don't believe in the, the anointing. They don't believe in any of the spiritual aspects of God whatsoever. No wonder the world's in a majority against God. It's because they don't believe. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise. That's a promise to every person that born, that's born into this world. Every person has that opportunity, that inclusive, that God will bring you into the fold of God if you believe and confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Amen. He's faithful this morning. He'll turn no one away, but that ain't what I want to preach about. 
I want to preach about a room full of people and what they receive from God. Now the Spirit spoke to me and said, all of you don't receive the same thing here this morning. Every individual has different needs and you don't receive the same thing. You receive things that you need in your life. You receive those things that God puts in your spirit. You bring those things in this morning. You receive them as you need them. If you don't need it, you don't receive it. Let me give you an example. Before my wife and I were baptized in the Holy Ghost, every time we went to church, it was the preacher, that's the only message he had, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen? After we received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, when that preacher preached about the Holy Ghost, it didn't apply to me. Because I had it. And I'd walk out of that church and I'd say, I got it. Amen? So therefore, I didn't receive. Now, there's other things that I had to receive. But I didn't have to receive that anymore because I had it. So therefore, every one of us here this morning don't receive the same things because you've got some things other folks don't have. Amen? So here's what God's doing. He's trying to fill up your basket. He's trying to fill up your basket. When you go to the grocery store, if you don't take a list with you, and you get home and you start putting your groceries away, you'll say, ah, I forgot to get so-and-so. Perhaps your neighbor's got it. But you ain't got it. 500 and something people left the Mount of Olivet. Now let me show you something. I'm just going to preach and teach this morning. Can I do that? 500 and something people left, the whole crowd. Now listen, here was their, here was their spiritual joy. I'm going to that upper room. Every one of them said this. I'm going to that upper room. I'm going to do what Jesus said. I'm going to be endued with power from on high. I'm going, I'm going to follow this crowd because I know they're going in the right direction. I'm going to that upper room. I'm going to tarry till I be endued with that power from on high. I'm not going to let anything deter me. I'm not going to follow a detour sign. I'm going straight to the upper room. I'm going to kneel down in me a chair side the wall and I'm not coming out until God answers with prayer. And when he does, I'm going to have what he says I can have. I'm going to do what he says I can do. I'm going to go where he says I can go. I'm going to be one of them counted in that upper room that gets what God has for them. 76% didn't make it. Let's say for argument's sake, some of them that left the Mount of Olivet didn't even make it to the upper room. And I can't say too much because I, I got a message brewing in me for first Sunday morning. I can't say too much, but I, I am going to tell you this. You have a lot pulling on you every day. And it don't just pull on your natural, it pulls on your spiritual man. And it pulls and tries to separate have you ever read it in the Bible where the, where the Bible said, and God sought for a man that would stand in a gap? Sometimes the devil pulls on us and it leaves a gap, but he's looking for somebody that'll just get in that gap. Who are you praying for this morning? Who are you believe in God for this morning? Who are you standing in the gap praying for this morning that they can't pray for their self, that they're under such a battle and a trauma and a tug of war, they need somebody to step up in that gap and say, God, I want to take care of this ground. Lord, you don't have to worry about this ground anymore. I've got the power of God in me. I've got the prayer in me. I've got the goods in me. I'm going to pray until I hear from heaven. And in that upper room, let's just say for argument's sake, 400 out of the 500 and something that left the Mount of Olivet finally gathers in that upper room. Now listen, God's a timely God. We're only dealing with 10 days here. It's gonna happen in 10 days. Can you clear out your uh, uh, agenda for 10 days that God can move? I got a good mind to run. Boy, I felt that all over me. And can you clear out your agenda this morning and let God have a little part of that agenda so he can move something in you that the devil can't steal, that the devil is afraid of you of? Can you just give God a few days or a few hours that he can put something in you that you'll make the devil so nervous he'll move on cross town and bother somebody else. Can you clear your schedule out? Hallelujah to God. 
400 in that upper room that first day. It was a, it was a nominal day. Boy, God was moving in there and they was all excited and every chair was full of a prayer warrior. And I mean, they was just so exuberant about it. And, and all of a sudden somebody slipped in the side door and handed a note. Little, old, little Johnny's sick now, Dad. You got to come home. And the, and the crowd started dwindling. And for 10 days, now let's just for argument's sake, let's just think about on the last day, that 10th day, the day when you was looking for it to happen. Oh my God. You'd paid a price, you'd cleared your schedule, you'd been determined. And on that last day, you've decided to do something else. The devil cheated you out of what God was going to do for you. That it would have moved you all your life. You would have never had a problem with that thing again forever. On the very day, God chose to bring the Holy Ghost in and you missed it. Because of a schedule. Now then, listen to this. When. Now it takes a determined person to get to win. You hear me this morning? It takes a determined person to get to win. It takes a person that's got their mind made up. Uh, Lord, I'm going to whole yards, Lord. I'm going to whole enchilada. I'm not turning to the side. I'm going to stay in this thing. I don't care what goes on. I don't care who's against me. I don't care what I hear. I don't care about the rebuttals. Lord, I'm going on with Jesus just the same. I'm going. Everybody else can turn, but I'm going. Lord, when you come back, you're going to find faith because I'm going to be waving this blood-stained banner that purchased my sins. I'm going to wave this blood-stained banner and you're going to know where I'm at, Lord. I'm going to be the one that's waving it the hardest, the loudest, the longest, the highest. I'm going to have that blood-stained banner. I'm going to make sure, Lord, that when you come back, you're going to find me. Now then... 76% just didn't cut it. What a statistic here. 76% of people that was excited 10 days ago. 76% of people that actually saw Jesus in a resurrected state float off the Mount of Olivet up into heaven. 76% of those people that actually laid natural eyes on the spiritual Christ. 76% that saw the angels descending down to minister to them. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? What you doing here? You got a mandate to go to the upper room. You got a mandate to go to Jerusalem. And you got a mandate to tarry there a while. They saw those angels and heard them with their natural ears and their natural eyes. And when they heard that, they were so exuberant about going to that upper room. Ye men of Galilee, while you stand here gazing, this same Jesus shall so come in like manner. But go to Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued with power from on. When they left that Mount of Olives that day, they had every one of them had such an excitement about God. What is it that steals our vision this morning? What is it that steals our excitement? What is it that dampers our spirit? Who throws a wet blanket on you to put your fire out? Amen. Somebody's got a wet blanket. Who's going who's to put that blanket on you to squash your fire out? Could be a co-worker. Could be a traveling down the road. You could leave home so excited about God till 
the devil can't even get close to you, but he'll send somebody by in a wet blanket and they'll just throw it on you. <laughs> Am I preaching the truth? We regulate our relationship with God because of wet blankets, people, words, things like that. When, listen, the Lord said they, the, the world hated him because of who he was and they're going to hate you too. People are going to hate you, but I don't want to preach about that. I want to preach about this. And it filled all the house. It didn't just give a little drink. They were full. Amen? Full. Do you know when a sponge gets full? When a sponge gets full of water, you can't pick it up without water coming out of it. It's got holes in it that... It just leaks out. God wants you so full that when somebody comes by you, you're going to leak out on them. You can't help it but just leak out. That you're so full of the Spirit, so full of the Word, so full of a revelation of God that whoever comes by your house, comes by your being, comes by your workplace, that you're going to just spread out over them and let the words of God, the presence of God, conviction of God, all of that that moves upon them and convict them of the sin that they're living in. Like a sponge. And you know something else a sponge does? It picks up a lot of stuff, don't it? So when they got to that upper room, boy, they was praying and seeking God. They were soaking up everything God was doing in that upper room. And listen, that's the way we've been here, but you've sort of been dry here the last few weeks. Your sponge hadn't been in the water. You know what the water is now? Regeneration of the water, which is the Word of God. If your sponge ain't been in the Word, it needs to get in there. If you haven't been in the presence of God, you need to get in there. Let that sponge soak it up. Because there's people that need your relationship with God. They need you to be on top all the time. And they, who is they? The 24% in the upper room. Can you see the difference between 76% and 24%? Two thirds of them wasn't there, but only a third of them was left. No, three fourths was gone, and a fourth was there. A fourth means one out of four was left in the upper room. Went through the trials, went through the hard times, went through the 10 days. And believe that God said when. When you endure afflictions, God's going to move. And they were all filled. In other words, God poured to them all they could stand. Amen. Amen. When you fill up a tea glass, you pour all in that thing you can stand. I mean, if you poured any more, it'd run out. What if God poured in you the Spirit of the Lord and you'd have to say, Lord, i got so much I can't hardly stand it no more. I'm full, Lord. And they were all filled. God didn't run out of a supply. He had enough for every one of them in that upper room and He began to pour out His Spirit. Are you learning anything this morning? God wants to pour in our lives until we run over. And listen, don't worry about running over. Somebody needs that overflow out of you anyway. Somebody needs to hear about God. Well, they ain't going to church no way. You might as well tell them where you're at. God saves and God heals and God delivers. It needs to run out of us. And they were all filled. Now listen to this. They'd been there long enough and they said, Lord, I'm going to stay here till I get what I come for. Ain't that what Jacob said when he was wrestling all night? I ain't going to turn you loose till you bless me. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to stay in this thing until you bless me. I'm going to walk away from this thing, God, with everything I want from you. Amen. Amen. Some folks don't want as much as other folks. Boy, that was some some kind of a statement. 
Some folks want just a little dab of do you like Brio cream. Just enough to make your hair stick up. <laughs> gel, gel, yeah, gel stuff. Just enough to make your hair stick up. But some people wants to be emerged in Him. Amen. Some people wants to be emerged in Christ, in His Spirit. Can't get enough. I said can't get enough of God. Some people want to just, they're, they're selfish. I can't get to the throne sometimes because some of you are there. You just won't leave a space for nobody. <laughs> Amen? But how many of us know God's got plenty of room and the ground's level at the foot of the cross? We don't have any trouble or any problems getting to God and staying there as long as we want to and as much as we want to, we just don't want to. And cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Now, I told the men Thursday night, man, the Lord give me this praying over here Thursday night. Everybody got the same Holy Ghost, everybody got fire. And ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Everybody got the fire. Everybody got the tongues. Everybody got the witness. Everybody got the power. I mean, there are 120 in this upper room that got everything. There was 380 didn't get anything because they went with the crowd. Amen? They went with the crowd. Now you can find a church that will tickle your fancy. You won't feel any conviction there. You won't feel anything the Word checked you on. You can just go in there and go in there bad, come out feeling good. Amen? But you can't get in the presence of God and come out that way. The preacher don't have to preach. The singer don't have to sing. All you got to do is be in the presence of God and it'll convict you. Amen. It'll save you. It'll deliver you. It'll baptize you. And you get in God's presence, He'll do a work in you. Not only that, He'll change the go ye in your soul and where you didn't want to, He'll put in I want to. You understand? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So every individual in that upper room, all 120, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. Mary Magdalene was there. All the 12 disciples were there, and others were in that upper room. These are family members, and these are fishermen, and these were tax collectors, and these were the ones that God changed their hearts and changed their directions through the walk of life of three and a half years and made an impact on their lives. And they went to that upper room and they said I'm going to wait for the promise of the Father the Father doesn't lie let all men be liars but let God be truth if we go to that upper room I know we're going to come out with everything God wants us to have Amen. Amen so we got in that upper room and it filled all the house where they were sitting now God can change us but it takes fire you understand that God can change us but it takes fire. Sometimes we like Peter, we just want to get close to the barrel to warm with. We don't want none of it on us now. Don't you put none of that fire on me. I've had people say, I'd come to your church, but I don't like that speaking in tongues. I said, you need to come on right now. You need to get used to it. Not only that, you need to have a desire for it. You need to get away from that little heater you got and get close to the fire. <laughs> now listen to this. Moses was minding his own business. You know the story in the Bible about the burning bush. Here's what God did. He set it on fire. 
If you're not set on fire, he'll set a bush on fire. And that could be your fire. <laughs> Don't let him set a bush on fire for you. Let him set you on fire. Amen? I don't mean about burn. You know what I mean by set you on fire. Some of us really need some flames on us. Amen. Moses was, they wasn't even his sheep. This is his father-in-law, Jethro's sheep. It wasn't even Moses' sheep. But he was taking care of them sheep. And listen to this. His mission wasn't to take care of sheep. It was to run from God's calling. And God let him run 40 years and didn't even check him. But he got on up in age. Man, this is some kind of good preaching. Lord have mercy knows. And God said, I'm going to get his attention. I'm going to set the bush on fire. Something's going to be on fire. You understand? Something's going to be on fire. God's going to get the world's attention. He's going to set something on fire. Man, when the twin tires burned, the whole world knew it. All these fires out in the Midwest and the western part states, boy, everybody knows them things is on fire because the news is going to run out there, amen. You set something on fire, it's going to draw a crowd. Luverne First Assembly, this time set this place on fire. Amen. Amen. I don't mean with a match or a torch. I mean with the Spirit of the Lord. And He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. And ye shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. He wants to set the whole world on fire. But He wants you to be a match. He wants you to be a word. He wants you to be the Spirit of God. He wants you to be the preacher or the witness of God. He wants that fire deep seated and steeled in your life to move people unto Christ. A fourth in that upper room received the baptism. But the baptism didn't come in by itself. It came in with fire. And he baptized them with the Holy Ghost and with fire because they said, and cloven tongues. Well, I like the Holy Ghost, but I don't want to speak in tongues. <laughs> Get a life. You can't have the Holy Ghost without tongues. I know some people teach you can and that you get it when you first get saved and you don't have to speak. No, that's not true. That's an error of the word. Amen. Amen. The Lord baptizes us with the Holy Ghost and with fire, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. These 24. Now let's, I, I only got about five minutes. These 120 made up in their mind, Lord, if I'm going to speak in tongues, I'm going to speak in tongues. I'm going to wait here till I get what you want me. I've already decided I don't even know what I need myself. How many of you can plot your own course? The way of man's not in himself is not in man to direct his steps. It's in God's will and purpose for our life that we submit ourselves unto the Lord and then resist the devil and he'll flee from us and then we can walk with God and talk with God and commune with him. But it's going to take that experience with God, listen, in the power and the presence of the Lord. Now listen to this. And it sat upon each of them. Everybody had the same thing. But it just acts different in other folks. Amen? I remember when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I couldn't quit speaking in tongues. Long time I spoke in tongues. And I only had two words or three words. I know my wife said, man, won't you get off of that and say something else for a change? Two words, yeah. So here's what happened. Here's what I thought about. I said, Lord, you're going to get tired of me saying these two words. You're going to give me some more. 
So every time the Spirit would move, them two words would come out, and I'd let them roll. I'd open my mouth, and the Holy Ghost would rush through me. I could feel it run, but it wasn't number two words. I did that for probably better than a year. And then all of a sudden, one time, God began to move in me, and other things started coming out of my mouth. Other tongues started coming out. It sounded so odd that I hushed my mouth. Close it. Close it. I said, God, I don't want to bat, bat, blaspheme you. He said, that's not blasphemy. He said, I'm speaking through you. And boy, I opened my mouth again and I ain't shut it since. <laughs> Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. All you have to do is open your mouth. Somebody wants to hear it. God's going to act on it. You present it to them and God's going to bring the results. Amen. It's time that we as Christians realize, hey, I'm going to be Pentecostal. I'm going to act like Pentecostal. I'm going to be Pentecostal. I'm going to have a state of being. I'm going to be Pentecostal. I've had people say, I'm Baptist. What are you? I say, I'm Pentecostal. You believe in speaking in them tongue? I said, I believe in, I'm a tongue-talking, devil-chasing, sin-killing, Holy Ghost-filled man of God. Amen. Amen. Simply because God Man, he'd done something for me, Brother Steve. He'd done something for me. When the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost, he just didn't know who he filled. <laughs> Amen. Now listen to this. I'm fixing to close. Verse 4, and they were all filled. There's some things of similarity in here. It filled all the house in verse 2. They were all with one accord in verse 1. And they appeared cloven tongues and set upon each of them. And they were all filled in verse 4 as the Spirit gave the utterance. The whole 24% of them received it, every single one of them, in that atmosphere. In that atmosphere of the power, in that atmosphere of the Spirit, in that atmosphere of waiting, in that atmosphere of faith, everybody received from God at the same identical time. Now what if God come through here one Sunday morning and healed every disease in this house, every sickness in this house, delivered every problem in this house, and saved every lost soul in this house in one service? Simply because you've been endued with power from on high. Listen, God warned them or spoke to the Israel for 1,500 years. Pentecost is coming. Pentecost is coming. Yeah, Lord, we heard that last year. Pentecost is coming. Yeah, Lord, we heard that last year and the year before last and the year before that. 500 years, we've, we've heard it, Lord. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now when it said they were all in that upper room, all of them didn't make it there. 76%. I want to leave this with you this morning. In which one of these two groups are you? Are you the 24% that's going to get everything God's got for you? Or the 76% that's just not going to believe Him? And clear your schedule out for God. I know over the last few months, God's been talking to us by dreams, visions, messages, interpretations, and prophecies. Other people that's come in this church, they're not here every service like we are. They've been prophesying God's going to do things and God's going to move in this church. And you look around and there's more empty pews in here than there are full ones. You need to get your eye off the empty ones. Amen. Need to get your eye off the empty ones. Get your mind on God because He's going to bring it to pass. I said God's going to bring it to pass. Come on, give Him praise. Stand with me this morning. I ask you a question. I don't want you to raise your hand or nothing. But you know this morning, when I, when I made that statement, 76% didn't make it to the 10th day. You knew the answer. 
I want to give you an invitation. Brother Chris, you want to come? Do you know that song, Just As I Am? With that one, please. God, now Sister Cindy, the Lord used her this morning, said it's time to quit playing games. We're not in a game playing deal. We don't serve God when we feel like it. Amen. We serve God in the bad times and the good times. We, we have to get a hold of God. If I went by feelings, <laughs> sometimes I couldn't make it. I don't go by feelings. I go by what I know in Jesus Christ. Amen. Which one of these statistics are we in this morning? The 24% that's going to get everything or the 76% that's missed everything? What caused us to miss it? What caused us to miss this 24% is it worth, worth missing God for well preacher I've just heard this so long till I'm going to wait till it happens and I'm going to come yeah but you may be too late because at an hour that you think not the son of man cometh are we going to miss it are we going to be a part of that statistic that gets everything needed that God wants you to have. Bow your head with me. Heavenly Father, I praise you this morning for the Spirit of God in this house. I praise you for the commission of your words. And Lord, the humbleness of my heart that you would use me to preach the gospel. And I pray this morning, let this word be etched in our hearts. Every heartbeat, God, let it sound a warning. Lord, if we're in that 76%, God, help us to move out right here this morning in Jesus' name. And Lord, if we're part of that 24%, help us to come pray. For we know somebody that's in that 76% statistic. God, would you move here this morning that none be left behind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This altar's open. The Word of God is phenomenal to me. Everywhere Abraham went, when he left his father's house, he built an altar. He knew that he could not do without that relationship to God. He built a place to pray and a place to sacrifice. And when Isaac and Jacob came along, they went back to that old altar that is their daddy built. And they began to rebuild those broken down altars. Sometimes we need to rebuild things, make them stronger, make them bigger, Make them deeper. We need to rebuild those things this morning. The Lord's soon coming. Those of you that will come and pray. I didn't say you had sin in your life. I I want you to come and pray. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord this morning. Lord, I'm going to change sides of the road. I'm not going to be in that 76% any longer. I'm coming. Lord, give me time to move, Lord. God, give me 10 days to get ready for you. Give me that endurance, Lord, I pray. That endurance, God, to overcome every obstacle. Lord, to clear out my schedule, God, that you would fill in the gaps and the places I need you, Lord. Lord, don't let me focus on anything else but you. Don't let me focus on anything else but you, Lord. For Lord, you are the great I am. 
You're not only the great I am, Lord, you're the great I will and I have. Lord, you're Jehovah Jireh, my Lord will provide. Lord, I trust in you these last days, God, to help me be ready and to keep me ready, Lord. In Jesus' name. Oh, Yendai, Shikona, Manoto, Kotrebe, Shilebe, Toko, Tavila, Bakoto, Nanala, Bakocha. Lord, I'm going to change my walk today. I'm going to be more intense on serving you today, Lord. Those things that I can't do, God, would you help me? Those things that I don't know, would you give me the knowledge? And I pray for wisdom every day, Lord. Give me wisdom from heaven, Jesus' name. I pray, God, don't let me be common or ordinary. I want to be a man or a woman of God. I want to be a man or a woman of God. I want to walk with me. Young guys, shake it to me. Corto to the bench. I want to be a woman of God or a man of God.